Epicurus tells us that we need to, be, to achieve this pleasure, right, what's worth pursuing, are the necessary desires and necessary desires alone. Now, given his view that what's worth pursuing is pleasure, uh, it's probably pretty easy to see why you shouldn't pursue the groundless desires. I mean, forget about that. It doesn't give you pleasure anyway. But why only the necessary desires as opposed to the rest of the natural desires? After all, they do produce pleasure, don't they? And I think what Epicurus is kind of getting at here, he doesn't use this language, but what he's getting at here is that there's this kind of law of diminishing returns with, <laughs> with natural desires, and you are uh, really just to maximize the amount of pleasure that you can have. And again, he's not quite a consequentialist at this point but it's getting close, right? Uh, to maximize the amount of pleasure that you have, well, just pursue the necessary desires. That's what you have to have anyway, and you get the most out of it. So what does he mean by this? Well, think about a lot of the natu merely natural desires that we have out there. Okay, so things like, you know, food is a necessary desire, sure, but we're talking about... Uh, you know, the macronutrients, protein, fat, carbs, in the right proportion. You only need so much, right? The amount of calories that you need, uh, you know, for the average person, right? We've all heard this number thrown around. The average person needs 2,000 calories a day. Okay. Uh, not, you know, I'm not here to dispute that, that number or anything, but let's just take that as a given. Uh, that's what you really need. And you need it really in certain intervals. So you get all 2,000 calories in one meal, then that's really not best, right? It's best to have it kind of spread out, this sort of thing. And the foods that give those sorts of necessary nutrients, uh, and you know, not too much, not too little sort of thing, are things like vegetables, uh, some fruits, uh, legumes, uh, water, and you know, some grains. Like quinoa is amazing for this. But beyond that, that's what you need, right? That that's it. Something like, you know. A, uh, you know, I don't want to name any particular restaurant, but <laughs> or any particular fast food chain, but your average meal combo at one of these fast food chains is sometimes two, maybe as high as three. You know, it's probably close to two times, maybe not two, but close to two times the amount of calories, or at the very least, at least, you know, at least the amount of calories that you need for that day. Sometimes more, right? sometimes more between the sandwich and the, uh, you know, the sandwich and the uh, fries and the soda, right? Um, that's way more than you need. And the reason why the, why you get that is for some kind of taste, right? It, it's for the taste of the thing. Um, but. You know, what happens if you don't have that anymore, right? I mean, Americans are kind of famous for this. We have really terrible, fa terrible as in for us, terrible as in for us fast food. A lot of other nations, you know, they, they taste this like, this is like, this is coated in salt and fat. How can this possibly be good? And, you know, we're kind of ruined for, um, you know, actual taste. <laughs> you know, we, you know, we think of salt as the seasoning for meals and you know there's a lot out there right um so the these natural desires that we have we try to fulfill them it's way more than we need and then we miss them man if you have really good food and suppose it's not just fast food suppose it's genuinely a quality crafted meal right if you don't have it then you after you're used to it then you miss it and these quality crafted meals, you gotta work really hard to get to them. I and mean, either you're cooking it yourself, which is, you know, if you're gonna have a quality crafted meal, you better cook it yourself. Or you're paying somebody else to do it, in which case you're gonna be working a lot of hours to do that. I mean, if you're, if you're having a really quality meal for one person, depending on what it is, you, I mean, you can spend as little as, you know, $40 and as much as $100, $150 for a single meal. And how much time do you have to work to do that? I mean, think about what Epicurus has given us here. What you need, what's worth pursuing, are the necessary desires and nothing else. This is a life free of a lot of distractions. Yeah. 
friends, shelter, food, water, simple food, simple water, pleasures that you could find right outside your door, contemplating the nature of the universe of reality. Not necessarily to have the answer, to have, you know, to beat your intellectual opponents into the ground and prove your intellectual superiority. Nah. Just the pursuit is worth it. To wonder. To experience the joy of asking the question and thinking of different answers with your friends. No external pleasures, ne unnecessary pleasures, unnatural uh, or, or natural pleasures that require you to do so much extra. And they're not worth it. I mean, why go after the blockbuster movie that costs millions and millions of dollars that you have to work so many hours to pay for? You know? Why go after that when you can go outside? There's no plot holes out here. Just butterflies on flowers. The still stillness of the mind. The cool breeze. And a nice trail. Why put yourself through everything else that causes stress? that demands your resources, your time, your attention, and you have to compete with everybody else for it. Why go after that? I mean, you can simply use your mind to think about the world. You can use your heart to be with your friends. Use your, yeah, use your body, sure. Exercise, sure. You know, just to keep up, keep everything moving. <laughs> to have health and ease of the body and mind and heart. Without having to put yourself through the ringer just to get the latest meaningless fashions and cars and prestige. <laughs>